On Monday, the 30th of March, 2015, I was about to step out of the house when the head of the home had a leading to ask everyone to gather around the living room. We confessed Psalm 91, prayed, and he anointed everyone, including the security guard. This wasn't the usual practice, as we all had our personal devotions at different times. There was never a formal gathering. The following day, Tuesday, the 31st of March, at about 11 a.m., I was in the living room helping Professor Jagger and his PA relate election results while watching, while watching television when our security guard knocked on the door. I answered, and he said, fire, fire. My response was, fire, where? And he pointed towards the direction of the fire. There was a black, thick cloud of smoke just above the roof of the house. I stepped out of the compound to identify the source of the smoke when I realized that the tanker filled with petroleum product had fallen and was already in flames not quite 250 meters from, where the, from the house. My aunt alerted the fire service from her place of work, which is close by, and the River State Fire Service as well, which, which didn't do as much as they should have. The product that PMS or AGO, which was in the tanker, spilled into the drainage, drainage system. And due to how the tanker fell, there were explosions right there underneath us. Sorry, I'll take that again. The product spilled into the drainage system due to how the tanker fell. And there were explosions right there underneath us, but on the other side of the road. With knowledge of how interconnected the drains were, I began to thank God for already going ahead of us the day before. To cut the long story short, the fire was put out after three hours of fighting, and 33,000 liters of petroleum product fell at our right hand, and it did not come near us. God is indeed faithful. He truly watches over us. He could easily have been a different story, but he came through for us about 24 hours before the incident occurred. All the praise and glory to our Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, church. I just want to thank God for taking me to Ecclesiastes of local church and all he did during my stay there. The end of 20, 2013 and the first half of 2014 were very challenging for me, and I just bottled up everything and pretended nothing ever happened. I went for my annual leave of work with so much burden, shame, and pain. And while there, all I asked God for was help because there was just so much happening around me at that time. I went to Lagos secretly and stayed there till the end of my leave. When I returned to work in July 2014, I saw a page from Ecclesia School brochure lying on the printer in my office. As a rule, I quickly glanced through to know what it was before trashing it. Like they would say in Pigeon, who send you? I immediately had a knowing that I needed to be there. And from that day, I could find no peace on the matter because my thoughts would regularly drift towards enrolling as a student. I kept quenching the thought, but it continued like that for weeks. On one of such occasions at work, I turned and asked my colleague what the whole thing was all about. She could only supply me answers based on the little she heard from the open day event that was done in my absence. I feel like do this thing, though, but I really don't know how it's going to be. She advised that I call Pastor Shola and ask him what it would entail, but I I objected. After I voiced out my interest to be a student, the battle within me got worse because I then realized that I had given life to that dream by proclaiming it with my mouth. At some point, I couldn't keep it anymore. I told my two sisters about it and they were supportive, howbeit reserved about the time in relation to my job. I told my mom too and she was all out for it because my mom is an addict of anything that concerns education. She made me read through the whole brochure over the phone because she wanted to know what courses would be taught and she specifically said she would have enrolled too if she were a resident in Tarkot. So I took out time every day to just ask God what he expects and why I should attend the school, but I got no answers. I later changed the prayer to threatening him that I would not use my salary to pay my fees. And that if truly it was him leading me there, he, sh he should provide the fees. 
true to form of an unrelenting merciful father that he is. I got the money for my fees. Immediately the alert hit my phone. Ecclesia flew out the window of my heart. I didn't remember or think Ecclesia until I had spent the money to 7,000 naira. I quickly took out 5,000 naira one morning and gave it to my sister to keep as part of the payment and succinctly added, if God wants me to go, he will bring the money now. <laughs> so began the burden of guilt I carried each time the announcement was made in church and the deadline for payment and filling of forms drew to a close. When the deadline was moved forward, I felt a bit of relief. But on the Tuesday before the final deadline, that's the Friday, I was sitting at the back in front of the console when Pastor Esther came up to take the announcement. And as she talked about it, I just bowed my head and asked God for mercy once again. The next morning, a friend in church called and said, I should send him my account details because he wanted to give me something to chew for my birthday areas. I sent him my account number expecting to see something small because the, beg the birthday in context was long gone. I told my colleague about it and we were thinking of what to eat that afternoon when I got the alert. I was very shocked and remained glued to my seat because it was 25,000 naira exact. Nothing more, nothing less. And that was the school fees anyway. My colleague just kept smiling because she knew how stubborn I had been about God providing the money. Guess she was even tired of hearing me voice my interest without action. I just stood up and called Pastor Shola immediately, asking him questions. He encouraged me to go on with the course. And then I went home during my lunch break, got the 5K from my sister, and went ahead to process the admission same day. I applied and was admitted for the program, certificate in the art of music ministry. I still didn't give God written space after then. I practically worried him, or rather worried myself, with knowing why I had to do the course and why he had to go through with getting me the fees. Mm. We began the classes and the first course we took was Christian character. By the end of the second class with Pastor Nkechi, I knew why God sent me there. Classes were simple, spiritual, and oftentimes prophetic, cutting across every area of life. The tutors were just pouring and pouring out themselves. Many times I would be so carried away and forget to take notes in class because strong meat was being served and it would take me days and sometimes weeks to digest. My life just took a dramatic turn for the better with each class. As I learned, so did I research further and reading the Bible or listening to the word became easy because my ear became very open. Even my job became better because I had a deeper understanding of what was being said or preached. And so I could tailor a message to fit any use. The practice of the truth wasn't easy for me at first and many times I fell. But the result with each practice of the truth lent was overwhelming as issues in my life were dealt with individually. I also would revisit my notes to clarify things were not clear. When the first trimester results were released, I came out third best in the class. And it really gave me, my siblings and I a good laugh because of the way the results were packaged and the grades were tallied. They were just written somehow. <laughs> For me, it was all spirit lifting because the effect of the school was being made flesh right before everyone. Now I try to pass everything I do through the sieve of God's word. Everything in my life that was null and void began to take shape and become reality. Amen. My greatest joy was in January this year when God narrowed my purpose down to specifics. And I can see his hands in everything I do, especially in the area of my primary assignment, music. I'm not where he wants me to be yet, but I'm very, very far from where I used to be. And I'm getting better daily. Amen. Morning, church. Uh, this morning I'm here to testify to the glory of God. Two out of so many things that are done. One is on uh, reinstatement, and the other one is on restoration. 
the drop in price of oil and rise in dollar that led to redundancy in most oil fans and cross country, which I was also affected, but God reinstated me. Started with a 20 days compulsory leave, followed by an additional 20 days leave. On the second day of the 14 days leave, I was called from the office for the collection of a redundancy letter, which I refused. Go for it. The refusal to go for the letter was because this protest was not followed. Meanwhile, prior to the incident, I had dreams where I had issues at work and I prayed about it. I remember Dr. F.A. Ebuke's uh, word on uh, Discovery Treasure 2012 when he said, If you see it, it is yours. And that God reveals to, re to redeem. That also triggered my faith and hope in God, knowing that He had gone ahead of me. I didn't share this information because it wasn't a good one. However, I lighted some few close pals who encouraged and prayed with me and for me. It got to a point where I was advised to source for help from a pastor of another church about my job, and I bluntly refused as I had the faith that nothing was going wrong, knowing my covenant with my maker. God showed his awesomeness to me on the 14th of May, 2015, and I was reinstated my job. A thousand tongues wouldn't have been enough to thank him for what he has done for me. I give him all the praise. I want to thank Pastor Kesh for the undiluted word every day and night. I also want to thank the few close friends that encouraged and prayed with me and for me. I also want to encourage every member of this church to believe and have faith in God, for it is indeed a covenant key, promise key. Numbers 23, 19, and 2 Timothy 13. Thank you. Good morning, church. I want to thank God for the miraculous delivery of my son. I got pregnant and I was unaware of it because I was still menstruating. I was feeling feverish one day and someone joked that I should run a pregnancy test. There was no reason, but I just decided to use a stripe. And I was surprised it came out positive. To double sure, I went for a scan. And the results confirmed that I was already 12 weeks pregnant. The scan also showed that the placenta position was ulterior. That means the mouth of the womb was before the baby. At the pregnancy progress, I registered in a clinic and I was asked to go for a scan again. I did, and like before, the position of the scan had not changed. Then I was referred to military hospital. At the military hospital, I was yet sent for another scan, which again indicated that the placenta was still arterial previa. When I gave my results to the, my gynecologist, who was a woman, she then tried to explain to me in drawing to illustrate on a paper showing me the position of the womb, that the baby and the placenta was totally covered. The placenta has totally covered the baby, and there was no a tiny space which the baby might come out from. She went on to say that's why it's absolutely impossible for the baby to be born normal. I smiled and laughed at the time of her statement because that moment, I found out that from the moment I was pregnant, I found out that I had to confess what I, was, what I wanted for my pregnancy and how I wanted it. The doctor then asked me, why did I laugh? If I was one of those women that are against cesarean section, I immediately told her that I was not against it, but that I serve a God that is a specialist at working with impossible cases. She smiled and said that she likes my faith. As the pregnancy progressed, at my 30 weeks of my pregnancy, I had a dream that God operated upon me and changed the, the position of the placenta. I woke up to real life and saw that I was bleeding. And I quickly called my husband, who was at his station, where he was serving, and told him we had to change our prayer and began to praise God for the victory over the situation. Later in the day, my husband called, asking me to go to the hospital to report about the bleeding. I told him I would go, but I wanted to watch and see how long the bleeding would last. The bleeding lasted for two days and stopped by itself. I never went back to the hospital to report this case. Rather, I kept on thanking God for the miracle of a quick and fast childbirth. On the 3rd of March, I woke up with a praise song by Nathaniel Bassi, Imela, 
I kept singing this as I prepared for my antenata. As I was on my way to the hospital, I kept singing the song. I had to put it on repeat on my phone. On getting there, after the normal checks, the doctor said I had to be admitted in preparation for CS. Meanwhile, my husband had already come down for the delivery and was requested to donate blood that will be used for the surgery. I told my husband to donate the blood for them, but it would not be used for me, which my husband did. The doctor asked me to get my things and come back to the hospital. We went back home to await our children's return from school to tell them it's time to go forth and bring their brother to this world. On our way to the hospital, contraction started. And I was... When I got to the hospital, I was asked by the nurses to go and eat and get ready for the commencement of the surgery. As we walked to the restaurant, the contraction became stronger and at short intervals. I managed to eat and we hurried back to the hospital. I felt like my baby was coming. As soon as I entered, I asked the nurse to come and check me. But they smiled and said I didn't look like someone in labor because I was not shouting in pain. They advised me to go to the bed and rest, that they would come up and check me later. As I walked to the, back to the ward, just at the delivery room door, my water broke with a loud sound. At this, the nurses began to run. They called the matron, they called the director, they called the consultant. They were asked to roll me to the theater because they had said it was suicidal to allow me to go into labor myself. At this point, a nurse helped me to climb the bed and immediately, with her help, to pull my both legs together, to my both legs together for my hands to have a grip on my legs. With one push, I delivered my baby. Just one push, my baby came forth. The nurse shouted, Ha, ah, madam, I like your feet. As the medical team was entering the ward, they heard the cry of my baby. God had walked ahead of my faith and my husband's faith. And we had gone ahead of the medical team. Hallelujah, God is so wonderful. The whole antenna went out, God, rushing to see me. The woman that was supposed to be operated upon, that had her normal delivery. I give glory and honor unto this our God. He's a good God. He's always a good God. Thank you. Church. I have numerous testimony, but I will be specific because of my entire life. It's a testimony of how God has fathered me, given me hope in a hopeless situation. I left my parents at the age of 12 years, and ever since. It being the Lord who had virtually taken care of me. I remembered in my early teen years, I sat down and went into deep thought how I will work down the faith without any help from any relation. I wondered how I will get a good education, how I will climb the ladder of life, I resorted to handing all my worries to God. I only got to know about purpose when I got to TCC in 1996. Since that time, my trust in God got stronger with the undiluted word of God. My life got brighter. With the help of God, and my determination, and much determination on my side, I got admission to study management in UST in 2005, a program of five years which lasted for seven years. But against all odds, I graduated in 2012 without any help from any man but God himself, who saw me through it all. Today I am a family man. I have my first degree, own a business, 
that employs the services of others, all because I was rightly located and keyed into the teaching of purpose, as is being taught from this pulpit and by standing on the word of God. I was able to key into the year of unusual strength. Yes, unusual things happen. And it could only be unusual strength from above that gave me the victories. Last year, I was dead financially and even in my health. But the unusual strength of resurrection power gave me the victory. In the midst of lack and confusion, with trouble on every side, I learned never to put hope on man. The only hope of victory is to heed to the grammar word and act upon it. I got counsel also from a pastor. Two messages were recommended, yet the grammar word was still tied to giving my precious. I did. And I relented not in service, even when all odds were against me. Like trekking to church for PA works and, and trekking back on an empty stomach on several occasions. The challenge of house rent, children's school fees, feeding, assuming my responsibility as the head of the family, payment of workers and gross indebtedness, health challenge, without money for treatment, in all, heeding to his word in the area of giving, both in substance and in service, even when I can't tell when a meal will come my way, God saw me through it all. I waited for my harvest. It wasn't immediate, but it eventually came. Though the devil tried to deny me one of the first harvests by trying to divide one of the expected jobs to someone else, but God stood by me, and it came true for me. After that, I got about five different jobs within a space of three months. I achieved what I couldn't achieve for one whole year. I paid up the fees, rent, and other debts. To crown it all, a good paying job with a car came in January. I had to pledge my first month's pay to redeem my budget of 2012. God is faithful indeed. Depend upon him and he will not fail you. Read, pray, and above all, do whatever he instructs you. And your victory is sure. Praise God. Good morning, church. For two consecutive days, I had a burden to pay for a senior friend in Lagos after I woke up from a dream. This was from Friday to late Sunday night. In the dream, she looked worried about her son. So when I woke up, I chatted her. She said that all was well with her and thanked me for standing in the gap. I continued praying in the spirit since I didn't have a release and told her to pray that long too. My five-year-old son has the habit of sneaking into my bed most nights when my husband is in at home. I usually complain to my husband on the phone most mornings when I wake up that I didn't sleep well because our younger son sneaked into bed and discomforted me so that I didn't enjoy my sleep. My husband would say I caused it by not locking my room door. And I always told him, I do so for emergency reasons, to be assessed easily by my children if need be. At around 1.40 a.m. Monday morning, he sneaked into my room with his flashlight and told me that he saw a black snake bringing out his tongue as he was about opening my door. I shunned him and I discarded the thought and continued praying in the spirit since I didn't know what I was praying about. After 10 minutes, I felt led to go get his older brother from his room to join us. Behold, as I opened the door, the snake was by the wall beside my room door. I was confused on what to do. I panicked, and in the process, the door tore my arm. 
I remember Pastor Ketch's message earlier in the day that said, we should act immediately. And I prayed for unusual boldness, as I couldn't allow the snake to escape. I reached out for some of my husband's shoes and started stoning the snake with it. Till I was able to incapacitate it. After this, I moved closer and I killed it. Praise God. I thank God for preventing the snake from biting my younger son and for keeping me alert in the spirit, even when I didn't know what I was praying about. I also thank him for that I did not ignore the witness to get up and check on my older son who would have come on his own, discovering that his younger brother was with me, being his usual action. It is indeed not a luxury to hear from God. He made us to tread upon serpent, upon the serpent indeed. He is indeed our shield and buckler, our very present help in times of trouble. Hallelujah. morning church. Our God is indeed an amazing God. Just like Sister Priya sang, a thousand tongues is not enough. Render all our gratitude to an amazing God for all he has done for us. God has and is coming through for us in every area of life. In healing, provision, protection, upliftment, favors, open doors, mention. I had this very sharp pain in my spine. It was so painful that I was bent over. I couldn't do anything for myself. I remember someone get it, suggesting getting a walking stick for me, which I rejected. I was miserable. I had to live on pills and injections, but all they gave were little. My husband took me for x-rays. I remember my husband and the radiologist discussing my case. And after much deliberation, he told me of how I had to live with that condition for the rest of my life. He said if I was 16, they would have operated and put in an iron or so to help. To this, I repl quickly replied that, thank God, I was way past that age. He kept saying how there was nothing that could, how there was nothing that could be done. At that point, I knew I had had enough, and I excused myself out to the reception and laughed. I just kept on laughing when someone I knew asked me why I was laughing. I said, can you imagine what they said is wrong with this body that God himself wonderfully and beautifully made? He said, what? I then spoke some line of tongues. He said, what again? And I repeated the tongues again and said, that was what they said is wrong with me. I could see confusion on his face, but I left there happier than I walked in because I knew healing had taken place. I got home that day knowing, knowing that I took a step of faith, picked up a broom, which I hadn't done for days, and swept. I missed the pain. I carried the laundry basket and went out to hang the clothes and did a couple more things. By the time my cousin came in from school, she was pleasantly surprised to see me out of bed. And she proclaimed, woman, are thou healed? And I said, yes, Jesus of Nazareth passed and he healed me. To God's glory, ever since I have never been bent over again. Amen. Praise God. I also want to testify of how the Lord gave us a brand new Hyundai IX35 2015 model completely free of charge. Hallelujah. Yes, amazing God. For some time we had believed for a car since the one we had was no more convenient. The children knew what they wanted, but I must confess because I know how much my husband has at every given time. And all the projects it was being channeled to presently, I didn't see that car coming. Whenever people come on stage to give testimonies of how they were blessed with a car, with my myopic mind, I will look around my immediate surrounding and conclude that nobody will know can give us a car, thereby limiting God in that area. This January, well, where, when we were told to write out our prayer request, the children said I should write that we needed a chip. I told, turned to my husband and told him. He said, okay, I should put it in. Little did I know that God was preparing someone somewhere to be a blessing to us. 
all through January, we just endured our old reliable. Now I know that all through those times, God saw our discomfort and was walking on the ground on our behalf. His eyes moved to and fro upon the earth to show himself mighty and strong on the behalf of them whose hearts are perfect towards him. Just before discovering treasures, we had somewhere to go. Just before discovering treasures, we had somewhere to go. But as unpredictable as the schedule of a doctor, my husband suddenly had some things to attend to. So we expected, we were, so as expected, we were all disappointed. So in a bid to liven the children up, I started telling them how our car will soon come. And my second daughter suddenly said, Mom, do not say will. Will is in the future. Our car has come. In fact, our car is already here. I felt very out of faith. So I said, have you all been praying for it? And they answered, yes. I then asked, what kind of car are you praying for? They said a jeep. And she said emphatically, and our jeep is here. To which my little boy with such a broad smile said, thank you, Jesus. The next day we were talking again and I said, do not worry, our car will soon come. To this, she pointed her little finger to me and said, Mom, I have told you, stop using the word will. Our jeep is here already. I then asked her, Flendo, is it faith you are applying here? And she said, yes. Where did you learn to have and use so much faith? I asked. And she said, her church class. And she went on to lecture me and, on faith and all they were taught. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> mm. Mirac miraculously, and being the good God that our Father is, He watches over His words to perform it. His word of faith came through for them and for us. On the 5th of February, five days after all the discussions, the morning of discovery treasures, our God moved on somebody's heart on our behalf. And a brand new Tia Rubber Hyundai IEX 35 SUV Jeep was driven into our compound. The keys and documents, plus including the receipt, were all handed over to us. Just like Pastor Ketch asked us when we shared this with her. Just like that, with no strings attached. Yes, just like that, with no strings attached. Our God is really amazing and never ceases to bless us. To this end, we give thanks to God, the Father of light, in whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turn, turning, who gives liberally and does not upbraid for this miracle and gift. We are so grateful and appreciative of his love and care. Amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Like the psalmist said, I will not hide thy righteousness within my heart. I will declare the, thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I will not conceal thy loving kindness and thy truth from this great congregation. Praise the Lord. On Friday morning, I woke up one Friday morning. I woke up late and thought to pray a short prayer and go to work since I was running late. But somehow I felt in my heart to pray in tongues for an hour. And this I did with a burden. I sent a text to the office before I started praying, informing them that I, was, I would be late for work. After the prayer, I had a release and then I took my, confession, my confessions, other confessions, including Psalm 91, with a lot of fervency. When I got to the office, I decided to look at Psalm 91 in a translation of the Bible called the Names of God Translation. Because I had, I had had a preacher said to me who said, that Psalm 91 contains the highest names, highest number of the different names of God. I checked it up, shared it with a colleague who was blessed and printed a copy from my husband, which I took home. At about 6 p.m., I stood around the door leading to the sitting room. And my husband was sitting around the center of the sitting room doing some work on his laptop. All of a sudden, we heard a loud noise as if the ceiling came off. We moved towards where the sound came from, but we did not see the source or visible effect of the bang. I then went out to take my usual walk, but just felt reluctant to proceed, and so I went back to the house. As I got into the sitting room, my attention was drawn to a piece of metal 
on the floor around the area where the loud noise came from. I picked up the piece of metal and showed it to my husband, who inspected it and said that looked like a bullet. We looked around the ceiling to see if there was a puncture, any puncture. Suddenly, we saw a hole in the ceiling, we say upstairs, that was created by the bullet. Apparently, a bullet got into our sitting room. From the tear on the ceiling, the bullet was headed towards where Danjuma was seated. But an angel of the Lord diverted the bullet. Praise the Lord. Safety indeed is not a geographical location. Safety is in the secret place of the Most High. God is indeed our present help in trouble. To God be the glory. Second testimony. Sometime in June last year, I went for a course in Lagos and was booked into a hotel. During one of the mornings while I was in the bathtub, I slipped and fell. Immediately I got to the floor of the bathtub, I quickly grabbed the handle of the bathtub and regained my balance. The sudden grabbing of the, hand to, ha, of the bathtub handle twisted the bone of my ring finger, the left finger, and got it out of joint. I quickly fixed it back. I don't know how I did that. And I began to release healing scriptures like a machine gun bullet. I later got ready and went to the training for the training. I experienced some swelling on that finger and some pain during the day, which did not last for too long. When I got back to Portacot, I went to see the doctor. He requested me to clinch my left fist, which I did with little effort. He also suggested that I go for an x-ray of that finger, which I did, and he observed that there was no fracture. Praise the Lord. Several people I had shared this testimony with all had one tale of woe or the other about people who had been involved in similar accidents that ended up in fatalities. The angel of the Lord did bear me up in their hands when I dashed my foot against that stone. Praise the Lord. It is of the Lord's mercies that were not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O God. We give him all the glory. Last testimony. Sometime last year, a couple invited us to their house for lunch after a Sunday service. After the lunch and some general gist, they told us that the Lord led them to give us their car. We are pleasantly surprised and filled with joy. The car has been such a blessing. We give God all the glory. Praise the Lord. Can we lift our hands and thank God for the testimonies we have heard? Just thank God for the goodness of God. Thank God for what He's doing in our midst. Like I said, the last testimony service, what is so awesome is the maturity of the testimonies. Very few do you hear pastor prayed for me. You just hear that people stood on the word, took action, believed God's word against all odds, and the victory came. You are the next one with the testimony. Let's praise God for what he's doing in this place. Let's praise God because God is here. God is here. God is here and we know it. I said, God is here and we know it. God is here and we know it. And we give him all the glory and all the honor. Amen.